Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on today, for being with us, the Dorchester Parish. Yet another fifth Sunday. Amen. The first one of the year, year 2022. God has been good to us, and we just came to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to sleep last night. And God, we come to just magnify your holy name. And as we go into our service today, we pray that you would uh, take part. We pray that you would join in. And don't be afraid because you're home. You may be home. You may be uh, may not be in your traditional settings, but the name of the Lord is yet worthy to be praised. Again, thank you for being with us on today, and we pray that uh, this service will be a blessing to you and will encourage you and take you throughout the week. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, Dorchester Parish. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for awakening each of us this morning for another opportunity to live in your name. I thank you for protecting our parish, our surrounding communities, and the entire world that we live in in midst of the ongoing pandemic. We ask that you please guide and protect us as we embark on each of our journeys into school, work, and various activities this upcoming week. We know that there is no task that you will assign to us that is too large for us to accomplish in your name, and I pray that we all will be able to abide by your will faithfully. Again, we thank you for all that you do, and I pray that each of us will be able to enjoy today's sermon in peace. In Jesus' name that I pray, amen.
Our scripture reading this morning will come from Numbers, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 2, and then verse 30. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the people of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a chief among them. Verse 30. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. The word of God for the people of God may he continue to bless the hearers and the doers of his word. Amen. Friday at work, a student was in my office preparing for a speech, and I paused to listen to him practice when I heard him quote one of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s most famous quotes, faith is taking the step first step without even seeing the whole staircase. Immediately, I wrote that down because it connected to a message that I had stuck in my head since Monday, a message about faith, a message about distinguishing between facts and truth, a message about choosing to trust God even when the things in front of you don't align with what God has already deposited within you. Earlier this week, I was drawn to the book of Numbers, specifically Numbers chapter 13 and 14, two chapters that outline a series of events. The Lord telling Moses to send men to search Canaan, the spies going into the land, them bringing back a report, and then the division that happened because of the reports that were brought back. To slow this message down a bit, let's start in Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. There we find this account. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. 
In these verses, the Lord very clearly told Moses that the land of Canaan was given to the children of Israel. Even before the men went in to search the land, the land had already spoken. The Lord had already spoken that the land belonged to them. One of the things that God shared with me, and I believe he wants me to share with you today, is that he will sometimes give you things even before you see them. The Thursday before last, as I was praying, God told me that I had the victory. I couldn't see it then, and in some of the situations that have come up during the past two weeks, I still don't see the victory. But I've come to realize that it's completely up to me to take God at his word in spite of what I see. To take him at his word because he is God. Because his record reflects that if he says something, it's true, and there's no reason to doubt it. It's up to me to take the step forward, even if I don't see the whole staircase. One tool of the enemy is for us to keep our eyes on our circumstances, to measure success and failure, trials and triumphs by what we can see, even if it contradicts what God has already spoken. Another tool is convincing us that we are intellectually capable of figuring out a better plan than what God has already planned out. And while God has blessed us with the brain to use, there are some things beyond our levels of intelligence. As the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55 and 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. All in all, God's wisdom and power has the ability and authority to supersede our ways and our thoughts. As we continue in Numbers chapter 13, we read between the 25th and the 33rd verse that the men who went to spy out the land came back and they gave a report. They reported that the land flowed with milk and honey, that the people were strong, that the south, the mountains, the sea, the coast were all occupied. Later we read of Caleb speaking up to say, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. At that, the men began to speak on how they wouldn't be able to defeat the people in the land because they were giants and they were stronger. After reading those verses, what stood out the most were the words, We are well able to overcome it. That's the second thing I want to share with you today. In spite of how the land looks ahead, we are well able to overcome it. The issue that has been going on for a long time and it seems like there is no end, you are well able to overcome it. The obstacle that keeps getting in the way of you reaching your goal or fulfilling a dream, you are well able to overcome it. The fear that holds you back from acting on the promises of God, you are well able to overcome it. No matter what it is, God is telling us today that we are well able to overcome it. And with that, I think we should just begin to praise God in faith. We should begin to tell God, thank you, even before we get to the finish line. And even more, we have to live our lives knowing that we are overcomers because of the power of Jesus Christ. I think I've shared before, but I want to share again. At the start of the pandemic, I was completely overtaken by anxiety. I was literally afraid to leave my apartment, and I didn't for several days. I remember having to go to Walmart one day, and after holding my breath for 10 or 15 minutes while I was in the store, I got back to my car and I just cried. I was so exhausted. When I got back to my apartment, I got into bed, and I just laid there for a long time. Eventually, I tuned into a church service um, that was streaming on Facebook, and I caught the praise and worship portion, which eventually became the full service. The praise team began chanting, worship is my weapon. And soon, I found that I couldn't stay in my bed any longer. I was compelled to get up and to begin worshiping God. My worship that day was my way of communicating to God that I didn't want to be trapped in the battlefield of my mind, and I didn't want to be paralyzed by fear. My worship was my way of surrendering to God something that was too heavy for me to carry. And I'm so glad I did. Uh, And even though COVID is still looming very aggressively and I'm still super cautious, the chains of anxiety and fear that held me prisoner, they were broken that day. Through the power of Jesus Christ, I became an overcomer. 
Moving to Numbers 14, chapter 14, we read that the people wept and they murmured against Moses and Aaron. They even began to question, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? In a language a little bit easier to understand, the people were asking, did God bring us here just for us to die? Here we read that what the people saw outweighed what was true. The truth was God had already given them the land and they were well able to overcome it. What they saw were people occupying the land who looked like giants who were much stronger than them. But again, the truth was God had already given them the land and they were well able to overcome it. At this part of the scripture, I'm reminded of many Bible stories that demonstrate God's faithfulness. The time when he provided a ram to replace Isaac being sacrificed. The time he gave David the strength to defeat Goliath. The time he saved the three Hebrew boys from burning up in the fiery furnace. The time he saved Daniel from being devoured by lions. The time he saved Joseph from the harsh treatment of his brothers. And the many other instances where the outcome was opposite of the circumstances. The, the outcome... The, the circumstances were pointing in one direction, but the outcome went in a completely different direction. I can also think of some situations that I, I've seen and know of personally. Like when one of my cousins was in a terrible accident and for months, she had to get help doing absolutely everything. Now she's walking, talking, living as if the accident never happened. I think of another cousin who was down with COVID and as she described her experience, she said she didn't think she was going to make it, having trouble breathing and everything. Now, when I tune into their church services, she's back at the front of the church helping to lead worship. I think about the time I drove from Texas back to South Carolina over a 15 hour drive on bad tires. So bad that when I had my brother, when my brother looked at it, he saw that I couldn't even just get the tires plugged because the wires were exposed. And I remember on that drive, I kept having to put air in the tire, but the car wasn't shaky. Um, I never ran off the, like no accident, not, other than the having to put air in the tire, there, was, there wasn't an indicator that there was a big problem until I was back home and I was safe. That's God's faithfulness. So many times God has given us outcomes that are in direct contrast to our circumstances. Even when the circumstances seem like there was no end to the suffering, to the pain, to the struggle, God stepped in and he provided a way. <laughs> There's victory in Jesus, even when the circumstances say otherwise. Even when whatever we, we are facing right in front of us it seems like an impossible task. Even if we feel like we're the grasshoppers to the giants that we face, there is victory in Jesus. I heard a sermon one time. It was about facts versus truth. Um, and as an example of what the preacher was saying, the fact may be that you're not qualified to do what God told you to do. But the truth, as recorded in Romans 8.30, Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Sometimes we have to step back from the facts of our circumstances, and we have to ask God to reveal his truth to us. The fact may be that we're sick without a remedy on hand, while God's truth is that he's a healer. The fact may be that we don't have everything that we need or that we think we need, but the truth is God is a provider. The fact may be that we have lived a life of sin, but the truth is Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. All in all, God is telling us today that while our circumstances may be pointing to one end, he's in control and he can turn things around. 
I want to encourage you all today to always take time, slow down, and seek God's truth. Ask God for the faith to step forward even when you don't see the stairs. God is able and God is willing to give us victory. But it's up to us. He's not going to force it on us. But it's up to us to accept him and to walk according to his perfect plan. May you forever remember that with Jesus Christ, we are well able to overcome whatever comes our way. Let us pray. God, we come and we say thank you. Thank you, God, for the reminder that we don't have to go through this life in our own strength. Thank you for the reminder that even if our circumstances say one thing, <clears throat> you can turn our situation around and give us an outcome, an unexpected outcome, unexpected to us, God. But we know that you expected it because you know you're ahead of us, God. God, help us to surrender to you. Help us to surrender to your truth, God. Help us not to get caught up and to be bound by the, the facts of our circumstances. But God, help us to surrender to your truth. You know what we need. You know what we need to get rid of in our lives. God, you know which way we need to go. You know what we should be doing. God, help us to completely surrender to you. Because I know, God, that there is victory in obedience. And I know that when we're obedient to you, you're going to lead us in the right direction. God, we thank you for, for your truth. We thank you for your covering. We thank you for your blood that we can 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 wa can wash be washed in God to be cleansed of our sins. God wash us over today. God wash us over today and make us new God. God wash us over. Cleanse us God. God remove the sins and the weights from our lives God. So that we can move forward according to your will, according to your plan, according to your purpose for our lives. God, we pray a special prayer for anyone who is who feels stuck in a situation right now and their circumstances just don't look good. God, help them to be encouraged in knowing that you have the situation in your hands, God. All they have to do is completely surrender to you. And God, we acknowledge that your your outcomes, it's not always what we want, but your outcomes are always the right outcomes, God. God, I thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your covering, God. Please continue to go before us. As we live this life, God, because we want to live a life pleasing to you. And when you when you tell us to go, God, we're going to go. When you tell us to stay, we're going to stay. When you tell us to speak, God, we want to speak. And when you tell us to be silent, we want to be silent. God, we just thank you for being who you are. Thank you for how you love us. Thank you for how you keep us, God. Continue to have your way in our lives. We submit this prayer to you, God. We submit our lives to you. So we move forward knowing that we are walking in victory. And God, we're choosing to take the first step even though we can't see the whole staircase because we know that you will provide. You'll provide wisdom. You'll provide, God, the, the skill. You'll provide whatever it is, the resources that we need, God. God, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith in the best. Nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out, and now you're watching us now.
for me. 